Hi, I'm Ken Mingus. Welcome back to Mingus on Tech, where we talk about what's hot and what's not in IT. I've got Lucas here with me and a uh, 3D printer. Thanks, Lucas, for stopping by. And we're going to have a mystery gadget guest in a few minutes, so hold the applause. He'll be here soon with a mystery gadget. We're going to try to guess what it is. First, I want to talk about 3D printing. Lucas, you're just back from the Rapid Conference down in, uh, in Orlando, right? Yeah. Um, which is 3D pr printing for manufacturing, sort of the big boys. And what I was fascinated by was you came back with a story about 4D printing. Right. So what the hell is 4D <laughs> printing? We're not talking about time-space dimensions yet, right? No, no. You know, obviously, right. uh, 4D is a marketing term, okay. but it's still 3D printing. But it's used for uh, medical devices uh, that can be implanted in the body and actually uh, grow with the body. So, so these are, it's not living, is it living material? Or? It's, it's, bio, it's biodegradable material. Basically, it's material that uh, doesn't affect the body when it's implanted and can degrade over time and be absorbed back into the body okay. and exuded waste material. So it, it serves a purpose for a limited amount of time uh, as a stint yep. or as a form for, say, building cartilage around it, like an ear or nose for facial reconstruction, or in this case, saving lives by opening up bronchial tubes in well, small that's, babies. Yeah, that was what caught my eye. This this was actually designed so that, was it for children who were having breathing problems? Yeah. And they're so small, but they're growing. So if yeah. you put something in to sort of open up the airways, that you know something that's 3D printed or 4D, 4D printed, um, if you keep it at one size, they're going to outgrow it very quickly. Very quickly, and that's that's part of the issue. Uh, so what happened is uh, there were um, four separate children, started out as three, uh, that were at various hospitals, and they had a condition called bronchomalacia. Okay. And it's a, a basically a weak weakening of the cartilage around their bronchial tubes. Okay. And it for, and it causes them to collapse in so that they can't breathe. So they have to be on uh, aerators or not aerators, but uh, ventilators, high pressure ventilators, to keep oxygen flowing into their lungs. Otherwise, it would automatically close up. And biomechanical engineers at the University of Michigan developed a method of printing stints. Uh, so imagine 3D printing the pr stints, 3D printing okay. the stints uh, that look a little bit like um, if you've ever seen uh, irrigation hose used for uh, landscaping. So they're perforated ribbed hoses okay, yeah. uh, that would go around the bronchial tubes and open them up. So think of the stint like a tent and then the sutures like a tent posts that hold it open and the cool thing about it is they can actually expand over time as the, the child grows right. and eventually get reabsorbed into the body so it's never actually removed when i mean they basically once it's installed once it's installed once it's, i guess <laughs> that's what you do with it right once it's put into the the children's body they it, it grows as they grow and then it gradually just gets disintegrated in the body exactly yeah and they can put another one in once if if necessary but they last two to three years yeah so in in every case there were four different cases and each of the children were able to be taken off the ventilator or in one case was reduced from high pressure to very low pressure and the rest of the children the other three or four children were able to just go home okay uh and and live fairly healthy normal lives now uh we're talking about children who were on ventilators for like 16 months yeah. of their initial life and they 3d printed these stints um you know, surgically implanted them, and boom, they're off the ventilators and gone home. Is this sort of a sign of things to come, you know, in terms of health care and being able to 3D print body parts and put them in your body and then what let them disintegrate over time absolutely I mean, well these are these are kids right no no these are stints there I mean, you're eventually going to see these for things like uh, uh heart surgery uh heart valves um facial reconstruction uh, they're already 3D printing uh, tissue, right? Uh, so for skin grafts. So basically, if we live long enough, <laughs> if we, uh, we can just wait till we get the to the part. 3D printing of everything we exactly. need, exactly, we'll be able to extend life for thousands of years. Right, right. You'll just get a new like body. <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you too. You, we've we've got on the desk here one of the uh, newest printers that you're you're going to be reviewing. I see the pink hippo. Yeah. Um, tell me what tell me what this printer is and I know you've only been able to use it a little bit but I wanted to get an idea real quick you know as to how this one's working out because it's it's nice to have sort of a tabletop model that you can kind of move around yeah this is very cool it's it's kind of uh, apple-esque in its appearance yeah. you know how it's very sleek and white uh, this is called the mod T and last year it was just a uh, crowdsourcing project and it earned nearly twice of the original three hundred seventy five thousand dollar goal that they were going for 
it's a very cool. It looks pretty simple in terms of you know of what you, of how you'd set it up. You've got the spool of fiber back here in the back, mm -hmm. and it goes into the uh, print head, and then, boom. It was. I mean, it was prob probably a five minute setup from the time I, I opened the box uh, to put it together. I, this is for the, the the newest 3D printer user out there. I mean, there's nothing to it, and it's actually kind of a cool design. The print platform, the black yep. uh, rectangle you see in there, where it prints on. Uh, it's actually kind of ingenious. It just sits on top of these these little rollers, it roller looks like. bars, yeah. right? And it, you don't attach it. You just lay it on top of them. And the roller bars move the, the print, and they move them. Yeah, they around. move it around wow. as it as it prints. And the print head is tiny. They gave me two, and as you can see, it's right underneath the mm -hmm. the mechanism here. Uh, it just unplugs. You just you know pull it out, unplug it, and replace it with a new one if you have any problems. What kind of very cool about this is that there's a community, a social network community built around this um, printer from, from New Matter. Okay. Uh, and you can share STL files for printing various objects on this social network. It's a lot like um, MakerBot's Thingiverse, which is the largest mm -hmm. uh, uh, online community for uploading. Do people do uploading. a lot of sharing of, of files like that? Oh, if you yeah. Want, like T hundreds of thousands are, of files I out mean, there. Is it mostly toys? I mean, what are people sharing? Everything. So let's say that somebody figures out a method of replacing a an earpiece on your glasses, and you have a particular model of of, and of if you want it in pink, eyeglass in fashionable pink. You know, you can yeah, do it that's in... what they sent me, unfortunately. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, they upload these STL files, and you can go search for them and print. Uh, you know, an earpiece for your new pair of glasses, or for anything for that matter. I mean, they have like paper, you know, toilet paper hangers and okay. all sorts of stuff out there. Some of it's kitschy. Some of it's you know yeah, the silly. Idea of, of, of of 3D printing my own toilet paper hanger. I, some of it seems kind of yeah. Seems you're right. Like, you know, in terms of scale, <laughs> somebody yeah. can probably do more better than I can do it at home. Well, I mean, the the majority of 3D printing today is still for for rapid prototyping. You okay. know, so to see if something's going to work, so you make one of it and you see if it'll work, and then you make it out of the traditional fashion, you know, uh, injection molding or you know, lathing, CNC machine sort of thing. But for hobbyists, there are actually communities out there of makers that sell this stuff on eBay and, and other sites. You mean the files? No, no, sell the stuff they print because oh, not everybody okay. has a 3D oh, they, printer. Okay, I see. So, so they like print a stuff and sell person it. prints things up and then starts selling them and off. And they sell them online. And they also sell the STL files. So this new matter, our social community, can uh, they, they allow them to sell their STL files because you create these in a CAD uh, software yeah. and uh, and they're not easy to do sometimes some of them are pretty intricate and useful like if you want to repair your glasses for example uh, so in other words there's a whole market out there for 3d printed objects and 3d printing files among 3d printer people yeah yeah okay absolutely. who knew all right so you'll be reviewing this for computer world at some point yeah i just got it it's uh you know i printed made my first print yeah, on like it the hippo. and uh slow but okay. you know hopefully slow. yeah really? very slow? slow uh about five hours to do this puppy uh which is hippo. yeah very very yeah <laughs> or hippo very slow compared to other prints but you know who cares it's it's very quiet sit it on your desk walk away that's the other nice thing is it has a little bit of um onboard uh nand flash memory so you upload just the file to it program in there and off you go off you go Com disconnect your computer and it just goes and prints great all right well thank you i appreciate the update on Absolutely. 3d printing both well 3d printing and 4d printing now for our fun time we've got the mystery gadget guest it's keith hey. yay hey. keith is back with his mystery gadget Hello. All right, with a mystery gadget. I thought that was a rhino. <laughs> it's, a, a it's a hippo, isn't it? Do you what? see it? There's no horn, horn on that. There's no horn. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, mystery gadget guest, what mystery gadget have you got for us? All right, we decided <laughs> I think we were going to do this as a new segment. Where yeah. it's like I come in and I show you something, you try to guess what it is. Yep. So, here it is. Uh, you can kind of look at it. It's It looks like a... I would say so see hard drive. On there. Looks like a hard drive. Yeah. Or battery, perhaps, Lucas. See the yeah. ports on the side. That's what I'm thinking. Rechargeable battery. Okay, that looks drive. like a lightning. No, maybe USB 3.1 yep. port. Okay. okay. And it, I don't know what. It looked like almost an is. HDMI port in the yeah. back, but I don't think that's what it is. All right, so if you is. saw, I'm going to Give us a hint. Don't tell us give, what it is oh, yet. Oh, I'll give you a hint. Yeah, give uh, us a it's hint. It's related to Is the, it bigger than a bread box? It's no. It's related to the title of your website. Mingus? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Mingus drive. It's a world. 
No, try the other one. <laughs> computer. <laughs> yes, there you go. This is an actual Windows 10 computer. You're kidding. Uh, there's a full yeah. There's a full version of of Windows 10. This is the Kangaroo Mobile Desktop Plus. Uh, the gift guide. If you saw uh, the Network World gift guide, yeah. and I think everybody, you know, everybody had access to that. Uh, the first version of the Kangaroo desktop was this, and then it had a little docking station that it could slide in. And yeah. with it, you did identify, I think, the HDMI port. That was correct on, oh. oh, it's on this. This is now the docking station that it comes in. Okay. And you can see some additional ports there. There's a VGA port, uh, an Ethernet port. That's the, the mobile desktop pro version. Uh, the initial version came out with an HDMI port. You plug in this to the HDMI. It has a yeah. couple of USB, yeah. and you can basically run a computer off of plug it into a monitor, plug it into plug a it monitor into a keyboard. keyboard, mouse. You're all set, and yeah. you know this is the main the main thing. What they've done now with the Plus is that you can attach this, and now you can actually put a two and a half inch hard drive on the bottom of it. It has screws that you can take off, put a hard drive on there. It gives you some extra memory. You've got 32 gigs. Uh, built, in. Uh, built in, but then you can just you know expand that if you want more storage space. Yeah, uh, it does connect to the cloud via Wi-Fi. So this has this one has Wi-Fi on it. But then if you have an old Ethernet port, yeah, or a jack, you can do that. VGA if you've got an old monitor. Yeah. Uh, and then they f they added an audio port, which was great because Smart. I was doing HDMI audio before. Now I've got like a speaker a system separate. that yep. I can hook up to it. Uh, what 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 it's great for is not necessarily business purposes because I think no, it looks it, like sort of thing you would travel around with. Yeah, this this can you can travel around with this uh, quite easily if you if you also then have access to an HDMI monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking that I you know I give this to my kids. Yeah. Um, and they can now do their web surfing and and, and it's their got a basic full version stuff. Of Windows 10 on full it? version of Windows 10. It's it's really awesome. Now there are some downsides to it. Yeah. Uh, there's only two gigs of RAM on it. Okay. I wish there was yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, you're you really know, two gigs right you now. You know, and then it's an low. Intel Atom processor, 1.4. So the processor is a okay. little slow, but, I mean, but you're, it's a computer in a little box. Yeah, but I mean, what you do you know, expect? 200 bucks right wow. there. 200 bucks for your Windows. Really okay, good. and a, yeah. and a few peripherals, and you're ready to go. Exactly. So uh, awesome. we're going to be reviewing this on Network World uh, along with some other cool PC tablet type things. So coming is up. the onboard storage uh, flash, or is it a small hard drive in there? I bet uh, it's flash. That's a good question. I, I guess he's probably flash. Can you f I don't know if you can tell. I, you I can think shake it, flash. see if it rattles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I plugged it I, in, I could tell. I think it's yeah, flash memory, although this does get very hot. Yeah. But I don't know if that's because no, if there's any flash drives parts. can get hot. Too. Flash yeah. drives, okay. I'd so, be willing to bet it's flash. We'll, we'll check that out and, and see. And, you know, I figured that the operating system was taking up a majority of that. Uh, yeah. It takes up about probably half, which is why you'd want to then yeah. install this on your own. Well, the ability to expand is what makes it useful. Right, right. Truly. So I did I stump you or not? I don't. You I did. No, I thought it was a hard drive or maybe too. a battery, and yeah. I certainly wouldn't have thought of it as a computer with Windows 10. So uh, yes, we're stumped. All right. Again, cool. I well. look forward to the next time you can stump us. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to do it for this week. Thank you, Mystery Gadget You're Guy. Welcome. Thank you, Lucas. Thanks, Keith. That's a wrap.